The Jim and Terry Show coming to you this time from the University of Toronto. Hey, you kids, come on, calm down, calm down. <laughs> Just us, two old guys with too much time on our hands, trying to take advantage of free education offered to all the people of Ontario once you turn 65 or older. Jim's birthday's coming up, so he's going to celebrate by taking a course in ethics. Yeah, that ethics course you sent me wanted me to jump. I uh, that depressed me to Can death. Can you describe the the video? Well, the whole thing is was the way it started you, you know off. it started off with uh, that was depressing enough. There was a bunch of guys going home from work, and the building they were putting up collapsed, and they all got pinned. Five got pinned on one track, and on one a railway got, track. Um, on a railway track, and the train's coming, and they're all yelling. Switch the track, switch the track, switch the track. But then you discover there's one person on the other track pinned. And all right, now's the decision. What do you do? You got the button. Do you switch the track and kill the one person to save the five? Well, that sounds pretty easy. But now all of a sudden that one person, oh, it turns out it's your son. Oh, well, there's also a big fat guy on the bridge. So one of the scenario was maybe you can push the fat guy off. Train will see it coming. Stop course that was stupid because in reality that was remember in the first scenario that switch was way over there so i believe it was further down the track that doesn't make sense because it it would have been before the switch so maybe i got it wrong well maybe either way the scenario is a switched railway track with a few people on one track after the switch there is one person on the other track And the question is, would you switch the track? Because if the train does not see anything and just barrels through, it will go on the main track, which is five people on that track will be killed. So the question is one of what I would call quantitative analysis, five versus one. Of course, you're going to save five. And yes, you are going to sacrifice one. And you're the one that has to do it. Or you could choose to do nothing, which means you still did something yes. because you're still a part of the scenario because you're witnessing it all and you could do something. You could have done. So we yeah. have these ethical conundrums of you're a bystander and you did nothing, yeah, but you saw it unfolding. And then and the th- guy on the bridge is a baby. You know, that's why I, I said to myself, well, maybe I'll just jump. <laughs> all right. The whole, the whole thing about ethics is to get you, and I, I used this word earlier because I took a course at, strangely enough, U of T in my faculty of education days called values clarification. And it was all about these kinds of scenarios to help you and eventually to help students decide what is a moral choice in certain circumstances and what seems so obvious because of Ten Commandments or because of whatever your tradition is, your faith. Maybe it's not as clear as you think when you are faced with complexities. And that's why they kept on changing the scenarios. Well, what about now? And how about now? Would you still do it now? And one was the biggest thing was just action versus inaction. I could do something, but if I don't, this is going to happen. If I do do something, I become an active agent in the death of someone. If I don't do anything, I'm not active. Does that have a moral weight to it? Yeah, I guess it does. I don't know. Uh, yeah. Well, let's go back you, to the Nazi Germany and gas chambers and the Germans who said, I didn't know, but you lived right beside the death camp. Yeah. I yeah. didn't know. You could smell the bodies uh, burning. Well, I just thought it was odd. Yeah, I just so, thought it was odd. Yeah, so inaction versus action, and you bring it right to the war in Ukraine, and you say, well, people, Russia, what's what's wrong? Why aren't you protesting in the streets? Why Action versus inaction. Is one a moral high ground and one not? Yeah. Or, or what difference does it make to the death that is going to happen? Yeah, and in that uh, visual that they showed, then they, they increased it. Okay, now there's 1,000 people on that one track, and there's only 100 people on the other track. Would you kill the 100 to save the 1,000? Now, if that, you know. Yeah, so do the strict numbers matter? Yeah. One, yeah. you might say, well, one person, who's going to miss that one person? Yeah. But then they complicated that by saying, now that one person was your wife. Yeah. One per- that one person was your child. Yeah. All of a sudden, it makes it tough to make the decision. And so if you vote to save the one because it's a relative of yours, does that make you a bad person because your love for your one 
was greater than your lack of love for the strangers on the other track? Well, it's, but that this is what makes it difficult for a, a soul like me. Uh, there doesn't seem to be any real solution in it uh, other than making you depressed because no matter what you do, it's going to be a earth-shattering experience. Well, let's throw. And I think, why do I want to make up an earth-shattering experience for myself? Don't you, we have enough? You don't rooms? like when your head hurts. No, I don't like the emotional connection. It, it just oh. made me feel down. It really wasn't. Now, why is there an emotional connection in this? No this is just an abstract intellectual exercise that would take place in any ethics class. I just, it, uh, it got to me for some reason. I didn't watch the whole thing. I didn't go to the real conclusion. I said, why am I doing this to myself? Uh, you you bailed amazing. on the thought experiment. Yeah. It, and that's what this was. It was just a thought experiment. I know, but I mean, you know, maybe it's my age. I don't know. I mean, I don't want to invent things that are going to be sad. You know, <laughs> there's enough sad without inventing it. I don't think I, that's... No, no, that, I, I that, know where you're coming yeah, from. Yeah, that's, that's not okay. the point. The point is that it's a thought exercise. Yeah. And at some point, all of our decisions come down to variations on this theme of what is the right choice and why do you make that choice. Yeah, you're in a tribe. There's three children in the tribe, you know, and uh, you're starving to death. And one of them, one of them's got to be eaten. One is five, one is three, and one is two. Do you kill the youngest one because it has no memory? Or now all of a sudden that youngest one happens to be your child? and uh, Or do you just starve all the whole I'd tribe? I'd say it's the one who has the most protein. Yeah, and you, you, know, it just, you can make all <laughs> kinds of things like that. And you go, I don't want to think about that. Yeah. Um, yeah. Doesn't life teach you sort of those things anyways? No, life doesn't teach you about five people on a railway track versus well, one on a switch track. No, well, life okay. doesn't. That's why we do thought experiments like that. Anyway, I thought it was. And what purpose? I know there's a purpose. It, yeah, the, it, it educates you. The I purpose is, yeah, the purpose is education and to clarify what you truly believe. For instance, one of your thought experiments that I'm sure you do just about every moment of every day is WWJD. Yeah. What would Jesus do? Yeah, yeah. So that's the thought experiment for you yeah. in your frame of reference. So could you apply that to the five on the track and the one on the switch track? And what would Jesus do? Does turn that the, help at Turn all? the water into wine? No. Okay. <laughs> he, he might. He might. <laughs> yeah, create miracles to avoid the scenario. Yeah. Well, I'm sure he, he faced very di many dilemmas himself. Now, don't get me wrong here. I'm not saying it's wrong. I'm not saying that something shouldn't be taught. No, you're just saying your head hurt. I just, yeah, say it emotionally affected me. Yeah. Because I didn't want to have to think of those decisions. That's why I said, funny mm -hmm. enough, never mind pushing the fat guy off the bridge. I'll just jump. <laughs> you know, I'll, I'll end it. <laughs> yeah, I thought they, they really layered complexity because there's yeah. the issue of obesity. Yeah. Like, like, why well, did they Of course, nobody cares guy? about the obese person. So. Yeah. And maybe it was the mass of the person that actually affected the, the – was the one person going to make that train stop or is it just that there was a large person would be visual and the person, the engineer, would see that person yeah. and stop the train or something? Yeah. It was, it was a weird thing. It was weird and it got weirder as you went down yeah, because there were so many variations <laughs> on the theme of complexity, which is just to say the absolute notion of there is an absolute – good and an absolute evil or an absolute right choice and an absolute not right choice it calls it into question and so it's asking you to look well, at the, the other nuances. thing the other thing too is obviously there's an emergency here and this is where my mind goes and why it ends up getting hurt <laughs> my brain hurts your brain hurts because too. now the train's bailing down the track you switch you switch the track it's going to derail and kill them all so it, it, you're asking the person. That was not introduced as a I know, hypothetical. I, I, I know, but you but would like to my, because that solves the problem for you. You don't well, have to make no, a decision. Y, y, so, y, y, but I'm saying that, you know, you can't just switch a track when a train's going full speed. Full speed. You have to accept the parameters of the thought experiment. I guess. And but that's, that's where my mind goes. That's like zombie movies. Once you buy into the fact that they're <laughs> animated corpses who can't possibly do what they're doing. I just watched World War Z or Z with Brad Pitt <laughs> last night. I saw that before, too. I hate those movies. You want you to buy into it, though. You accept the parameters that anything's yeah, yeah. possible, except you have to follow the screenwriter's or director's point of view and the limitations of that point. Well, of since view. that doesn't matter, then at, at the speed of the train, that's uh, doesn't matter. What about the guy on the bridge having a gun and just shoot the through the glass the, window? Shoot, shoot the train guy. I didn't read that as part of the scenario. I don't think it was, it was there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it didn't equip you with a rifle to destroy the engineer. 
I, yeah, I but either way, that would be an action on your part. It would what, be. what would the difference be between shooting and, that and engineer? And again, it would be stupid. Well, you could also push the button, and you would be the actor in that scenario. So what's the difference? When you're a shooter, when you're a button presser. Well, okay, so what's uh, the right answer? There is no right answer, and that's the point of life. There what? is no right no, answer, I, No, Jim. but I, I need Live to, with it. I, celebrate I, the ambiguity. I, I celebrate need, being an agnostic no, and I, uncertain I need, about all this stuff. I need stuff. to know the outcome. <laughs> do we? That's the point. Do we? We think we do, but do we? I don't know. We're getting close to the end here. Is there, uh, in, you know, 30 seconds maybe. What? You didn't like your head being hurt. You didn't like that your heart was hurt as well because you talked about emotion. You were emotionally yeah, yeah. engaged. It, it, it got me down. I'm not quite sure why it did, but it got me down to the point where as I confessed, I didn't watch the very end of it. I thought, oh, why um, am I no, doing this to myself? No problem with not seeing anything to the very end. I get that. You've been depressed since your holiday. Your holiday yeah, was yeah. depressing. It, well, yeah, in, in its own little way. And your way, shoulders yeah. are a little rounded these days. Oh, it's oh, like you're that? carrying a lot of weight. How's that? Not the weight of... Having eaten so well in your holidays, which I, I think you did. You ate well. He's looking at my stomach, <laughs> bursting out from your unopened, sh- your open shirt. Um, well, because I can't shut the shirt. But you've been <laughs> you've been oppressed or feeling oppressed, and that's why yeah, I'm alluding yeah, I've to been your in a, a your bit of a funk, Yeah. Yeah. So, truthful. what are you doing to get yourself out of it? Um, eating and drinking. <laughs> Sorry, just, yeah, how is that going to be productive? I would ask you. Avoidance is your thing. Yes, That's yes. what you do best. Yes. All right, the Jim and Terry Show, talking about ethics at the University of Toronto. Take care now. The I'm kids, Terry. Your kids were good. Your kids were good. Nice to say. Pass it forward.